Do you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? Send us an email with your story for a chance of it being featured on Weird World. A time slip is a phenomenon that causes unexpected time travel. The following are three stories where people unexpectedly had an encounter with the past that could not be explained. A vision from the past. The following incident happened to a woman by the name of Colleen Butterbaum. Just before 9am on October the 3rd, 1963, Colleen was a secretary at Nebraska Wesleyan University. She was asked by Dean Sam Dahl to deliver a message to Professor Martin in his office that was located a short distance away in the C.C. White building. Colleen had to force her way through a crowd of noisy, chattering students that were in the hallway of the building, where some rooms had been reserved for music rehearsals. As she passed one of the rooms, she could hear the distinct sound of a marimba being played. As she entered the first office of Professor Martin, she was suddenly struck by a strong odour. The odour was so strong that it not only stopped her in her tracks but gave her a choking sensation. At the time of the incident, she was looking down at the floor and the moment the odour had stopped her, she felt the presence of someone else in the room with her and the sound of the noisy students, along with the marimba, abruptly ceased and the room was now filled with a deathly silence. As she lifted her head, her eyes were suddenly drawn to a cabinet along the wall of the next room. All of a sudden, she saw the presence of another woman. The woman had her back to her and she was reaching up to one of the shelves of the cabinet with her right hand. The woman was standing perfectly still and never moved at all. The woman did not have the transparency of a ghost and yet she somehow knew that she was not real. Then, to her utter amazement, as she continued to stare at the woman, her whole body just faded away. But not parts of her body bit by bit, but her whole body disappeared in front of her all at once. Colin was able to accurately describe the woman as being rather tall, with black hair and a bouffant style. She was wearing a blouse and an ankle-length skirt. Her overall appearance was like someone from the turn of the 20th century. As the woman faded away, Colleen Butterbell was not aware of anybody else in the offices, but then sensed there was a man sitting at the desk. She quickly turned to look, but there was nobody there. The window was wide open, but everything was very still. As she looked out of the window, she could see a few sparse trees, but it was mostly an open field. As she continued to look out of the window, she was shocked to find that the new Willard sorority house was not there along with Madison Street. At first she was transfixed as she stared out of the windows, but suddenly became frightened and quickly left the room. As she walked back into the hallway, all of the original noisy sounds returned. Strangely though, all of what she just experienced had only lasted a few seconds, as girls continued to walk into their respective rooms, and the marimba continued to play. Now utterly confused and shaken, Colleen Butterbaugh returned to her desk and resumed working, but was unable to concentrate and kept stopping. She then decided to approach Dean Dahl to tell him what she just experienced. She said to him, I realised that the person was not of my time, but I was back in her time. Colleen decided to check out some old yearbooks that she'd never seen before and came across a photograph of a woman by the name of Clarissa Mills, a former lecturer in music theory and piano. Clarissa Mills had started work at the school in 1912 and the clothing that she wore would have been fashionable around the year 1915. In 1936, Clarissa Mills collapsed and died one morning around 9am. She'd apparently been struggling against the fierce wind to reach her office. She read that Clarissa Mills had been interested in choral singing, and the cabinet which Colleen had observed her reaching for contained choral arrangements, which had dated back to before Clarissa Mills' sudden death. It just so happens that Professor Martin, who Colleen was delivering a message to, was a visiting teacher from Scotland and was making arrangements for his choral class. Did his thought patterns about choral music open up a window to the past where he somehow communicated with music teacher Clarissa Mills just as Colin Butterbaum entered the room? A woman takes shelter from a storm. In the 1930s, a woman by the name of Edna Hodges from Wiltshire in southwest England was cycling along an old Roman road called Ermine Street just outside Swindon in Wiltshire. 
Edna was on her way to visit a friend when it started to rain. When the weather became extremely harsh, she decided to take shelter and came upon a small thatched cottage that was located in a small lane just off of the road. She could see smoke coming from the chimney and decided to approach the cottage and just as he reached the front door, it suddenly opened and standing in the doorway was a tall bearded man wearing a green waistcoat. Edna then asked the man if she could take shelter from the storm and invited her inside. The room had a low ceiling and there was a fire burning. The old man never uttered a word and just as Edna began to walk inside the cottage, she suddenly found herself back on the road, continuing her journey as if nothing had happened. She had no idea how she got back to the road and does not remember leaving the cottage. When she arrived at her friend's house, she was greeted by a friend along with some other people that lived locally. They were surprised that she had arrived at the house on a bike in a terrible storm, but she was totally dry. Edna Hodges explained to everyone what had happened to her, and after describing the cottage, she was shocked to find that the people were adamant that the only building on that road was an old derelict cottage that had been vacant for about 50 years or more. Edna later decided to retrace her steps and when she reached the small lane where she'd come upon the small cottage, she was now confronted by a derelict cottage, just as the people had told her. Where had the cottage with the smoking chimney gone? And more importantly, where was the tall old bearded man in the green waistcoat? Edna Hedges had no explanation as to what had happened to her, but was certain that what she'd experienced was real. Had Edna encountered a time slip? The Vanishing Cottage During the first half of the 20th century, three girls were out hunting with their father on Dartmoor in Buckfastley. Buckfastley is a market town in Devon in southwest England. At one point, the girls became separated from their father and became lost in the dark. Suddenly, they spotted a light in the distance and hurried towards it and came upon a roadside cottage. As they drew closer to the cottage, they could see windows without curtains and they decided to peek inside. They could see the warm glow of a fire and sitting in front of the fire was an old man and a woman. Abruptly and without warning, the cottage and fire, along with the old man and woman, vanished in front of their eyes. The girls immediately found themselves in the dark again. Like the previous story, had they entered some sort of time slip and had a glimpse of the past?